So I was gonna I was gonna start my presentation by gauging like the uh, energy in the room, but I think that just woke us all up since it's you know it's the last uh, I'm the second last presentation of the day. Uh, so yeah, my presentation is actually about Mark. Mark is a cool guy. We saw that uh, yesterday how Mark could just go thanks to Aritz uh, Medina's uh, presentation, but. So, here I'm actually going to present, joking aside, a love story. It's between Mark and Listen. Um, okay, this is, this, is, this is so bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> it's actually about uh, marking as a term, marking, you know, selecting, and listening, uh, readability, things like that. And the... Mo like the focus of, to of this presentation will be about switching from the mouse being your primary input device when you use a computer to the keyboard. So that's what the subtitle is about. So who am I? My name is Juan Carlos Corona Romero. Um, I'm a software develop engineer. In, in Canada, you, you, the engineer is a protected term. So I, I, I can't call myself an engineer there. Uh, I don't even know if I am. I like the idea of an engineer actually being held accountable for things because nowadays, you know, I could do something to screw up someone's digital life in a really bad way. And I want to, yeah, people should be held accountable. Um, so yeah, I work for a company, a small company in Vancouver, Canada, uh, known as Evident Point. Um, my role there is that I, the web technology is what I like, and I've really grown in that role um, at Evident Point. So, uh, yeah, web tech is my jam, and they really like that. And uh, they, Evident Point really is trying to push web technology forward. We like the idea of progressive web applications. Most of our products are steering towards that and embracing the open web platform. Uh, and that, that's my GitHub short username. So, as I mentioned already, um, a little bit about Evident Point, but Evident Point, we provide digital publishing solutions with ebook, with our numerous years of ebook and e learning expertise. We provide, uh, we contribute to open source efforts, mainly through this project known as Readium, which is to develop an open source read EPUB reading system, but now it's gone beyond that with keyword Readium architecture. Uh, and a little bit of hypothesis on the side here and there. Um, and yeah, well, like I mentioned, EPUB, PDFs. We used to be a PDF first company, but we're, we're shifting towards HTML documents and things like that. So we also have cool tools that let us like internally convert PDFs to EPUBs and, and so on. Um, so I, I'm going to set some context. And uh, this, uh, we have a product, a commercial product, known as Active Textbook, uh, eBooks plus annotations in, in some form. So the idea, the premise is that you upload a book, you read in a web-based viewer, as I alluded to. Uh, you enrich the content with various forms of annotations, rectangular-based uh, annotations, visualizations in different ways. You can also create interactable uh, elements like images, videos, quizzes. But you know, there's also the core highlights and notes. And I'm going to show you a little bit of that. This is to set the context. Kind of a little bit of a plug, too. I mean. Yeah, so um, this is our sample. Um, and as you can see, these are the various forms, point-based, comments, discussions. Uh, you know, you have these, you can create something by clicking somewhere, comments. Uh, I think this is read-only mode, but I can't select, I can't drag and select uh, a square here to create something. But you have these overlays. Like these, these are enhancements on top of the, of the book. This is an OpenStack uh, textbook. So you can see you can, uh, we can click on a video about, I don't know, referencing the mosh, but somehow uh, there's a link and, and so on. Um, but there's one problem. Like I'm using my mouse for all of this. Uh, I, can, I can use our toolbar uh, and, and so on. But then again, um, so what happened with this product over time, actually, and I want to send, this is, uh, I will go into that, but I want to 
take a break here and look at these. I really like num numeronyms, if you don't know what they are. So this stands for internationalization. And between the I and the N, there are 18 letters. And that's kind of like an acronym, too. And I'm guessing people here in DC like acronyms. Um, so that's why I'm showing this here. There's also another one, uh, uh, local, uh, localization. And then there's, of course, W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium. So you can also use them for like repeating characters. Uh, and there's this one, which is my name, because it's very long. <laughs> um, and I think maybe this, I, I was hoping this would be a numeronym for something, but I, I don't know. Um, maybe inspired something? Uh, and then, but this one's really the one I want to focus on, and this is, this is, this is our, our ally, this is accessibility. Um, so a company approached us, and yeah, that's, that's to highlight that. A uh, company, uh, a consortium of high, uh, higher level education institutions uh, that develop um, solutions for education and so on. They approached us and, uh, and they said, we, we like your product, but it's, it's not accessible and we, we really care about that. So can we help you, can we collaborate and make your product, you provide our product, I mean, you provide uh, the product and then we tell you and give you some, you know, some requirements and can you go and implement those requirements in your product for in increasing accessibility? And they did. Um, so I got, I didn't get directly tasked this, but members in my team did. I, I was aware from uh, indirectly about what, what was going on, but it really started getting me thinking, as a web developer, how do I do this? How do I implement this? Or like, how do I start? So, and I'm a very practical person, pragmatic, um, I don't, I mean, I, nowadays I can, I'm, I'm more comfortable with reading uh, specifications, specification level information, but, you know, uh, the W3C published uh, the WCAG, which stands for the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. So those are, those are the guidelines that we followed. And here are some uh, extra, extracts from there. So there is a principle known as operable. User interface components and navigation must be operable. Navigation must be operable components UI. And the one I want, I'm, I'm choosing here is this guideline for keyboard accessible. Make all functionality available from a keyboard. And this kind of sounds like a rule. So um, there's another one as well that I, 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 I highlighted here, I selected. Another principle, uh, the understandable principle. Um, Information in the operation of the user interface must be understandable. Now, this one was a little bit more abstract. What, what does it mean? Guideline readable, make text content readable and understandable, but isn't it already readable? But, and I remember, you know, like not everyone can read visually. What if I have a visual impairment or I have some disability where I can't read it? Um, or I have a learning impairment where uh, things are just not understandable for me. I need to be, things need to be pronounced I need to be able to use text to speech. Um, so let me, let me show you some of this. But before I do that, I want to go back a little bit to what, uh, what we did with Unison. So uh, let's, just, uh, let's just go back to this one here, the baseline. Uh, if I hit tab, nothing's really happening, um, which is how I interact with the keyboard, uh, tabable. Uh, components, but here we have we have a lot more now. We can go, we can tab through everything, and I'm just gonna let go of my mouse. Actually, I, I need to turn this thing on so you guys can see what I'm hitting, unless that's too distracting. Uh, yeah. So okay, let me just let me let me just use my keyboard, and all right, let's let's look at the table of contents. Sweet. Let's go through that. Uh, yeah, and that seems like I can I can go back. Can search. I don't really want to search for something. I don't know if it'll work well. And then there's a text to speech setting here, which is, uh, and then I can. Oh, what happened here? Oh, I can probably use my arrow keys now, um, and select some more stuff. Actually, let's let's pick let's pick a color. I like I like purple. Yeah, green. I don't know if that contrasts well with purple, but let's use yellow. Playback speed's fine. All right. So how do I do TTS shortcuts? Okay. Um, now let me let me get out of this sub thing and then just go to the main content. And uh, all right, so I want to start. I want to invoke the text speech, so I forget how to do that. 
because there's a new keyboard shortcuts that I need to learn if I'm invested in this. Uh, so there's element navigation on and off. OK, let's turn that on. Oh, cool. I can now curse, uh, use my go through and some elements here. And like, let's go see if I can read. Word level uh, granularity is fine. Sentence, maybe that's default. Uh, start reading R. Someone on a cell phone will gain an appreciation for the difficulty of reading small sections and of prose. Yeah, it's kind of loud. Someone trying to read uh, on a cell this? phone will gain an appreciation <laughs> for the difficulty uh, T, T. of reading. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so it, it, and it's supposed to go through, you can, you can like go through the whole book, and I, I think it just broke. Oh no, focus changed. Yeah. When, 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 you, when you're dealing with multiple iframes, it happens here, the focus is kind of weird. But I, uh, yeah, so I think you get the idea of now of Texas speech and how I'm using the keyboard for this. So let me go back to my presentation. Uh, so I've shown you that. Now let's move on to text selection. So think about text selection. How would you be able to do that in a web browser with just the keyboard? I, I drew a blank initially. Is that an anchor? I, without using my mouse, without, yeah, I need to set an anchor. That's right. We need to think about the, the primitives here. I need to set an anchor. But how do I set an anchor? How do I, 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 I need, I think what I found was that you need, it, you need a new form of uh, operation and that did not need the mouse. So let's, let's go to Chrome. Um, and let's go here. And I, 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 I can tab through elements, but I just don't know how to select text. Anyway, um, I found out that uh, Firefox has a caret browsing mode that you can invoke with F7, and it tells you about it here. If you press F7, pressing F7 turns on caret browsing. It warns you here, like, this feature does this. Are you sure you want to do this? It's something you might not know about. Are you sure you want to do this? And actually, it asks you every time you click F7. It's not, <laughs> actually, I, there's that option here. Do not show me this again, but if you don't click that, it'll, it'll warn you. So now, um, now I can click, and it gives me a, like uh, like an I beam. It seems like I can I can't edit the text; it's read only, it's like content editable, but read only. Now I can move the cursor around with my keyboard. I can hold shift, and I can start making selections, um, and I can start adding modifier keys to like if I select shift and alt, like naturally in the operating system. I feel like that goes through the words. And I can do, I think I can do some more than that. But uh, yeah, so now I have this. But uh, let's, go to, uh, let's go to Chrome because we all love Chrome. Doing F7 doesn't do anything. I don't think this is a, I, I, I should have done my research on this. And I, that's why I wanted to be here and ask about what's the history beti between this or, or about this uh, carrot browsing mode. Um, but uh, apparently Chrome has an extension you can add. Um, it's marked here as accessibility. It's by Google. You can add it. I'm sure they use web technologies to implement this, which I'm going to start like reverse engineering, reading the, the source code if it's if it's available somewhere and seeing how it works. Maybe uh, maybe we can make that a, a built-in feature with with something like that. Add it to Chromium. That's yes. That's because I think the rumor was that Microsoft got them to want them to do that. So now that I have that, I can turn it on, and then I get the, I think I get a similar experience, but I got to refresh the page. Because I, I know how that's how uh, that's how um, Chrome extensions work. Now there's a weird visual bug here with this page, so I'm gonna go to the client test. Uh, and here I think it's uh, let's see, let's refresh that. I don't know. It's is it working? Yeah, it's working. Okay. So now it, now there's not the visual bugs no longer there. So I'm gonna start uh, selecting some stuff, and as you can see, the very familiar hypothesis adder pop up comes up. Um, and I hacked it actually to just just a little bit, a little UX improvement, so I can when I hit tab, the next tab will jump into the context menu, because it didn't do that naturally. This the tab order is determined by uh, various factors, and uh, the adder is actually the uh, the bottom most in the element order. So you'd have to tab through everything to get to it. So what I did was I wrote this this change in the hypothesis source code, like 20 lines of code in the adder JS that just like listens for the next key down. If it's a tab, it prevents a default and, and then it does that and then it lets go. 
like it goes back to normal. It could be improved, but this is just, is just a hack. Um, so now we can do that and we can continue using the keyboard. I had space. And this is actually pretty nice. The editor here uh, is, is uh, I can't tap through it. And ta-da. Um, I created an annotation. I anchored something with caret mode, caret mode and, and I selected some stuff and I tabbed through the interface. But now I don't know how to get out. <laughs> how do I go back to the main content? But yeah, there's, the, the experience is still, is still uh, you know, needs to be developed. Um, and I just want to show you that there are a couple of issues on other browsers too. Uh, actually, I'm going to move on to my next point because I'm checking time. Uh, but I'll use the next browser to test my next point. Um, so my next, uh, yeah, so we, we already checked that out. Um, my next uh, aspect here is, or um, I forgot the word, um, also screen readers. So I also th thought about, um, if you don't know what a screen reader is, it's assistive technology for visual uh, impaired users that uh, you can get, like, you can, it can read the screen and it can, uh, tell you some output like with text-to-speech or with a braille display about what you're seeing. Um, and Apple, I, I, I'm not that very familiar with uh, a lot of the screen reader technologies or screen reader software. So um, I, I like that Apple has one built into the operating system, which I can just invoke now. And this was my little, this is kind of, kind of how it looks like. Uh, and let's go look at... Uh, how to turn that on. So with, if you have a new touch, like touch bar MacBook, you can hit the, like the fingerprint key five times. Accessi eh. Accessibility options. Oh, I really hope I can change the volume. <laughs> I think you can't, but I think I can. Okay. If you can help me out, that'd be great. See. Yeah, that's that's Welcome to Mac Vivaldi, Mark and Listen, Google Slides, Vivaldi window, so, Mark and Listen, um, Google Slides, frame has keyboard focus. Let's Open go to example search or Zaman sure, in a copy M. In a in a in a M. In a C R G. Example domain frame. So there, there's you are currently a, on a frame it's telling me what inside of web content. To enter the web area, press control, option, me, shift um, down arrow to https colon example domain frame. You https colon slash slash en dot wikipedia escape button. You are currently on a button. To press this button, double tap anywhere on the touch bar. Escape button. You are currently on a button. To press this button, double tap anywhere on the touch bar. Stop. Yeah, okay, good, thank you. I need to calibrate myself here. Um, so what I want to show here is that I'm using Vivaldi, which is Chromium-based, or Chrome-based, and it doesn't actually know how to read this because there is some black magic to me at first. It was black magic as to how can a screen reader built into the operating system be able to dive into the, to the DOM. And apparently there's some, there's a lot of, it's a very complex process, but uh, uh, web browsers really need to actually expose this I don't know if Chrome's doing it, Vivaldi didn't do it, but there's, some, there's, a, there's something called the accessibility tree and the accessibility object model that's being pushed. So hopefully that in the future improves. But I'm gonna have to go with what's native here and that's... that's space with Safari. code, space with Firefox containing uh, window example Safari? domain. Safari, Safari. Safari. example thing. domain, window, example domain, example domain, web content. Um, you are currently on web content. This. Okay, I'm gonna skip example. into here. Just you are currently you on a heading point. level one. Um, Inside of web content, this dom. I can this use this. I can the use heading this, level. Uh, this dom. This heading level. Heading so level one. Example. Do this domain elements. visited. This dom. Heading level um, one. Example I can also domain. Hold shift as I'm doing this. This domain is established to be used for domain. Example. Example. Dom. New this domain. I can uh, is select it. U four illustrative. Exit. Dot U U U M U. What period? You may use permission. Example but, domain. Yeah, that's an, that's way select you select text with the keyboard. You are really currently on a here. heading level one. In um, example. Let me turn on the hypothesis bookmarklet here so we can get into Safari. Um, example to, to domain. That. This select domain is and this established. Is also this version Selected. of hypothesis. The bookmarklet. You are currently on a heading level one. Inside uh, of web content. So to exit this web annotate button. 
And you are currently on a button inside of webcon okay. button hypothesis like and location now, now actually, frame. I'm conflicted. I, you are currently I don't know. on a frame to enter the web area press control I'm option going shift the down arrow index so I it's a little bit of a disconnect should I be using the 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 voiceover keys new hide toggle or we hide new hypothesis hypothesis new hide new page note I, button. I don't know but you are maybe I'm just not used to this empty now in example um, domain window this in, so let me M. just this domain heading level one. Like, if you're Example really domain. This is, you're only, you are currently only on a heading this. level one inside of web content like, to exit this web first, area. But, like, press control you can option shift it. upper it's, row. It's like vastly configurable. You can tune it to however you need. And uh, there's probably you know if 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 a website or a web app does a really great job with implementing those 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 um, principles that I that I brought up from a WCAG, then then the experience can get better. This dome oh, is ignoring the annotate but that, edit text. Hello, a e a o add post to public oh, but, but using, add edit I'm share this tab, page. Uh, Gmail link 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 end this okay. add tag guess, edit to add okay. post to public add post to down point cancel down have, post to like, public button. If I you are currently on a button to click this button. Keys, press control option add tag edit text add tags edit text post to public button. You are currently on a button to click this button. Press control example. You are currently on a uh, heading level one inside of web content now. application. Um, and let's go back to my presentation. And um, I actually didn't really know how to end this off, but after uh, having a great conversation with Doug, he told me about this this uh, this thing called uh, the curb cut effect, which was um, so in the past. Uh, historically, you needed to fight for um, mo act increased mobility around the around the city, and so um, you the, now we we probably take this for granted. I took it for granted because I I didn't know about the history, but you know the the curbs are cut, and originally they were for uh, you know people who needed to use wheelchairs or other ex mobil mobility uh, needs. But now we, we all benefit from it. You, if you have a bike, if you have, um, if you have a stroller, if you, if you have one of those scooters around the city, you can, you can use it to get around and you don't have, you're no longer blocked by there not being a cut in the curb. So what, my, what I wanted to conclude with uh, this here, it was that um, if we start, you know, if we start implementing these, these accessibility enhancements, um, in or start thinking about it in, in the way that we develop or we implement or design things, there will be features that will be uh, not just va will be very valuable not just for those who are disabled or who really need them, but there will be a benefit for us all. And I really like this because I, I really think I really hold to a high regard uh, a website or something that uses I, I like I like using the keyboard, and you've probably noticed throughout my presentation I have like this. Um, this style tile based thing that I can use, I can open up a. Actually, well, it's supposed to be tiling. I think it broke. Anyway, I can. I don't have to use the mouse to manage my windows. Um, I can go through. Uh, let's see if I have one somewhere. But I, I think you get the idea. I, I really like using just the keyboard, and uh, and I am benefiting benefiting a lot from 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 this work. So that's that's how I can. Uh, and this off. That was great. Thanks for bringing us back from the Tornado One. Any questions? I see Jeremy approaching the mic slowly. Will you approach the mic? Maybe I should turn this off. Cool. Thank you very much for that demo one. I've. Uh, I've not really tried, well, not recently going through the whole process of like creating an annotation and, and, and everything else. Um, interestingly there, that some of the work that we did a little while back to make hypothesis work better on mobile devices. Mm -hmm. So when you were the fact that the adder actually shows up in the right place when you make a selection, turned out this actually solved the problem with the keyboard, excessive with at least making, the, mm -hmm. making it work when you make a selection with the keyboard, although that wasn't the original intent at the time. I think that's a nice example of when a browser has events or hints, but doesn't specify exactly what input device you're using. So here, for example, we listen for selection events. It doesn't matter whether it's keyboard, touch, etc. Yeah. Um, so that's a nice advantage of 
leveraging the platform. One thing I wanted to say about uh, ex ex inspecting the accessibility model, uh, I've found Firefox very helpful. There's a separate tab in the browser which shows you the accessibility tree. I don't know. I have a feeling Chrome might have. I, I think Chrome does does yeah. have something. Yeah, that's the view I was that's the view I was getting at that I found quite helpful for for debugging this kind of thing. Yeah, it's a more reduced version of the DOM where you know the attributes that matter are are yeah. are, are isolated away and. and the other thing I would say is they, that VoiceOver does have an option so that it shows just the thing on the bottom left-hand corner without actually reading any of the text out. Uh, that makes life... For those of us who have... Uh, yeah, th that makes life much less painful. I should have turned that on, but yeah, <laughs> thank you. But, but cool, thank you very much for showing us that. And um, yeah, I'd probably ca I'd be interested to catch up with you about the, the change to the adder and the tab order. Mm. Sure, yeah, I can send you a patch. And <laughs> I really just want to thank you. Uh, I think that's really awesome what you've shown us today, and it's it's hugely exciting for me. It's the coolest thing I've seen all week, and I'm really eager for us to at Hypothesis to um, you know be benefit from your work on accessibility. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Many.